Okay, so now I'm going to introduce uh, integrated information theory of consciousness. So the, this is a title of the paper by Oizumi Albantakis Tomoni in 2014. And it is actually capturing the uh, most important aspects of this theory. It says uh, from the phenomenology to the mechanism of uh, consciousness, integrated information theory 3.0. The first part, this uh, phenomenology to me uh, mechanism, this is the essence of you know, what the IIT is actually from here to, it's not the other way around. That's the important part, okay? So uh, from the phenomenology part, uh, what IIT tries to do is uh, first to identify five essential characteristics of uh, any conscious experience. And this is called uh, axioms in IIT literature. And what it means is uh, it's uh, supposed to be uh, the, any kind of uh, uh, the true uh, nature of the consciousness when you think about it carefully. Uh, in any uh, of the uh, example of the um, conscious experiment, experience. And it may not be immediately uh, uh, understandable or uh, easy to understand, but uh, this is a kind of uh, most important aspect of the theory. And um, uh, most likely you may have some uh, questions, but then I'm happy to answer uh, the questions over the uh, forum or emails uh, if you send me, okay? The first one is uh, intrinsic existence. So this, what it means is that the consciousness always exists uh, for the subject who uh, experiences that. And uh, it is an existence for the systems uh, itself, okay? And then the second aspect is uh, composition. Any experience, any moment of experience is always composed of various aspects of the uh, things. Here, uh, by the way, this is an uh, exam exemplar sort of, you know, um, drawing uh, based on uh, Ernst Mach, um, uh, philosopher in 19th century, a physicist as well. And uh, this is a sort of drawing of his own body, uh, you know, on a chair, looking out to the uh, window and on the left side, there is a bookshelf. And uh, the, this part is the sort of his um, observation of his nose and, uh, you know, uh, beard or mouth from your left eye. And as you can see on this side, there is a blue book and a book and on the left side, and then there is some, something blue in your, you know, um, clothes. And these are the, um, the kind of the parts that compose your experience. Okay. So another aspect is the information. Information in IIT uh, is a bit different from uh, information in other uh, sense as I uh, uh, come back to later on. And what it means is that it is an informativeness or uh, differentiation of many more different possible experiences that you could have. And any moment that uh, experience is uh, informative as it is, uh, the way because of the way it is. So if you are experiencing the uh, moment like this way, then the way the experience feels or experience is very different from any other different moment of experience. And in that sense, it is informative. And sometimes, uh, we also talk about it is a reduction of uncertainty among all possible uh, experience to one particular. And that can be one way to consider this information action. Then integration. So integration action of the IIT means that uh, any moment of experience is always integrated and experienced as a whole. Um, for example, in this case, it is uh, this figure shows that um, experience is never like experienced independently on the left half of the visual field and the right half of the visual field. It is always experienced as one thing at a time. It's not like uh, each of the parts are experienced independently and cannot be accessed or experienced in, uh, you know, separately. This seems a bit, you know, um, contradictory to composition, but, uh, 
it is uh, integrated always and then composed. And that uh, gives you uh, uniqueness or informativeness of the experience uh, at one time. So after the existence, uh, it kind of, you know, uh, related to each and then uh, uh, composes and also sort of the specifies uh, essential characteristic of consciousness as a whole. And then the final one, uh, final axioms of the phenomenology is uh, exclusion. Ex uh, exclusion of the phenomenology means that the, when we experience consciousness, um, any moment is uh, the way it is, nothing more or nothing less. So for example, what it uh, this figure depicts is that uh, we just can't or we don't experience the world without uh, color, but we always experience it with the color this way. And we don't experience the uh, thing with color and the, all the vision plus blood pressure. This is uh, supposed to be a blood vessel. Something that we cannot experience is always outside and something we cannot experience that compose our experience, such as, you know, uh, black whiteness and so on, which we cannot just directly access to is also not our experience. Both space and time and also um, feature and many things, there is some kind of certain boundary of experience and that particular boundary is the one that we are experiencing from our, you know, intrinsic viewpoint. That's what it means. So after this existence, we have uh, four uh, characteristics that come, um, you know, specifies and also um, commonly characterize any moment of conscious experience. That's the phenomenological axioms of the IIT. And then this uh, next one is a to the mechanism of consciousness part. So what IIT tries to do is uh, after identifying these you know, characteristic, it tries to translate these uh, properties into mathematical uh, uh, formulation so that what kind of mechanism can support, uh, you know, uh, support this type of the, uh, features such as existence, composition, integration, information, and exclusion. The, um, and eventually, I'll, I'll give you this, you know, uh, sort of the very uh, basic summary first. It eventually, it proposes that the large quantity of the integrated information corresponds to high level of consciousness. So if we are awake and, you know, experiencing something compared to sleep and then not dreaming or anything or under the general anesthesia, or we have a brain lesion to become, you know, complete, you know, vegetative patient, uh, unlike that, our high level conscious ex uh, uh, awareness is uh, supported by the large quantity of the integrated information. That's first. And uh, this largeness uh, or, you know, the quantity is defined by the largest clusters of uh, cluster of integrated information in the brain. So there is, uh, IIT proposes that there should be some locus of the consciousness and that has a clear boundary and that, um, uh, specifies this largest, you know, quantity of uh, integrated information that corresponds to one particular level of consciousness. So up to this, it is uh, exclusion and also information uh, kind of, you know, idea. And then uh, more, most importantly, IAT also proposes that distinct quality or qualia or pa patterns of that uh, integrated information that is composed or uh, uh, that is specified by the, all the members of these largest clusters is corresponding to each type of the choreo that we are experiencing at the moment. So roughly speaking, if there is a face percept that I have right now, then there should be something uh, that supports this particular uh, configuration of the system that is included in this largest cluster and that supports this particular uh, shape or uh, uh, for the face choreo. That, that is a sort of a uh, upshot of this IIT theory. Okay. And then let's go from uh, one uh, step by step. So I, I'll take a couple of examples, informativeness, integration, and the, compo uh, the exclusion uh, one by one. So informativeness, I said that it can be considered as a one out of many possibilities. 
and a phenomenological observation, you know, any of the uh, moments that we have, uh, be it the dreaming or hallucination or thinking or uh, feeling emotion or, you know, seeing something briefly, it is always that um, is extremely informative or differentiable in a sense of um, this informativeness. What I mean is that uh, I am now seeing this display and making lecture and I'm not at the beach and then you know I'm not at the you know lecture theater and I'm not uh, you know sleeping all these possible experiences that I can have I am experiencing this one so out of many possibilities I'm like this right now and that is the sense of this informativeness okay and then uh, that means that you know any mechanism that supports conscious experience must have differentiability or a large capacity of uh, you know possibilities information. So uh, just to give you an idea, um, I, I'll give you a one uh, thought experiment, and this is a human versus photodiode introduced by uh, Tononi in a very first you know uh, paper. So single photodiode which detects the light and then becomes you know uh, on state or um, or you know if you it doesn't ex uh, you know detect the light and then goes to the off state on off. Uh, two discrimination can be considered as one bit of informativeness. Okay, and then uh, single neuron, if we consider its firing spike or not as an on or off state, then it can be also considered as one bit or not uh, per state. And I'm I'm adding this you know question mark because uh, single neuron can have many more states than uh, one one on or off, but uh, I'll just leave it for now. And then, considering our own brain, um, as I mentioned in um, our real lecture, um, at least within the cortex, uh, we have 86 billion neurons, and that's roughly speaking 10 to the 11 neurons. And if each of the neurons can have on or off state, uh, it corresponds to 10 to the uh, 11 bits. And so, in terms of the um, differentiability or possibility of the states that brain can take, it's much, much humongously different from a single photodiode, you know, one bit versus 10 to the 11 bits. And that's why, you know, one first reason to suspect that, you know, brain can sustain informativeness, but a single photodiode cannot. Okay, so the next part, the, the next part is uh, integration of uh, experience. Sometimes uh, it can be called as a unity of experience. So the phenomenological observation is that uh, any moment of conscious experience is always integrated or unified and the experience as one. And uh, this suggests that uh, any mechanism that supports conscious experience must be integrated. And one thought experiment that uh, points to this is a uh, uh, comparison between human versus a digital camera. A digital camera has uh, a you know, uh, currently uh, the high-end digital camera seems to have 10 to 20 million pixels, and that's 10 to the 7 pixels. And uh, in the humans, uh, we have 10 to the 11 neurons. Uh, however, the difference between these two uh, entities is not only the scale, but uh, the way each of the pixels or neurons are connected. In the brain, each neuron is connected uh, to at least thousand to 10,000 neurons, and uh, it's a connectivity that makes it difficult to uh, separate each of them. So um, this is a uh, one, you know, uh, exemplar kind of, you know, idea. So if you uh, have a um, camera, and then that sees this, you know, sees in this means, uh, it's not really like conscious seeing, but it's uh, capturing this scenery. And then uh, each of the photo uh, diode is sensing some information to the next layer of the uh, processing. For, for this system, it doesn't matter if the system is cut into the piece and then separately processed, uh, you know, uh, physically, and then uh, let's say store this image in the hard disk. There is no change in the because of the separation of the pixel in one area to the other or not. That's uh, the meaning of the split in the camera case. On the other hand, in the case of the human, uh, who sees this, uh, you know, scenery through their brain, then uh, it's a completely different kind of story. What it means is that uh, if you split the brain, then uh, 
uh, as we discuss in next week, split brain patient can experience this one scene as a two separate, you know, uh, independent perceptions. And here, uh, one interpretation of this uh, split brain patient consciousness is that the consciousness itself splits into two. It's very different from the split case of the uh, camera. And the reason is that you know our conscious experience must be integrated, and the, uh, the physical substrate that supports this, if it's you know not integrated, then consciousness itself is not going to be integrated. But in its own, each consciousness they are supported by some kind of ex, uh, integrated uh, subsystem, such as left hemisphere here and the right hemisphere here, um, independently. So uh, rough idea so far is that the integrated information uh, called a big phi, it's a capital letter of the Greek letter phi, um, phi, and pronounced as phi, and small phi, uh, it's uh, uh, patterns of uh, integrated information um, composed of a small uh, subset of all these, you know, entity within the uh, uh, boundary or sort of local minima of the systems. And these uh, constitute uh, this uh, uh, large uh, big phi that corresponds to the level of consciousness like awake. And then small phi patterns that constitutes sort of how exactly this, you know, one neuron uh, uh, contributes to the other or two neurons specifies more than one each or, you know, how these three contributes uniquely compared to all these possibilities of the two pairs, uh, uh, pairs of the neurons. Each of these uh, specifies um, the information. And this high informativeness or differentiation, at the same time, a uh, highly integrated system uh, uh, specifies and also supports this integrated information of this system. On the other hand, if you have an, um, a homogeneous network where uh, each of the neuron is uh, connected with others, you know, with a uniform, uh, you know, strengths of the uh, uh, enhancement and uh, inhibition and excitation, and each of them are, you know, are not unique, then each of the subset doesn't spe uh, uh, specify unique information, and that's low in terms of information. And also any subsets also are also similar to any other subsets. That's also very low in terms of uniqueness or differentiability. And these are the case where the phi value becomes small uh, due to the low in, uh, information. It's in highly integrated, but there is no differentiation. And then uh, another case is this uh, situation. So the number of the elements are eight. And it's the same across all of you know these three systems. But here, each of the two pairs, uh, two neurons are connected to each other, but not across. So any kind of information that is stored or you know processed within here is not going to be delivered to other. And that's a um, case of the low integration. So either low information or low integration contributes to small phi, and then uh, it eventually specifies very. Uh, poor uh, small five patterns. And that corresponds to uh, low consciousness, low level of consciousness and no conscious perception. And then finally, exclusiveness of experience uh, or the border of consciousness. Uh, the phenomenological observation is that any moment of conscious experience is always experienced with a particular border and extent. So uh, it suggests that uh, any mechanism that supports conscious experience must have also a border or exclusive and also you know, a boundary. And uh, again, rough idea uh, on uh, how we get to this is uh, without mathematics is that the locus of consciousness is the subset of a system that attains, achieves local maximum of the integrated information, big five. So, here uh, again, um, the eight uh, you know a neuron system that are connected in a, some kind of complex uh, way, and then uh, if it receives um, a bunch of neurons that in, uh, you know is getting connected to this you know central you know system, 
then the way that IIT uh, proposes that you know these kind of things that are not integrated or doesn't contribute to the uh, specification of uh, uniqueness um, is not going to count. And in fact, if you count all of these excessive units, then the phi value is going to decrease compared to isolating the phi value with just you know central part. And same goes for this uh, motor outputs only kind of roof uh, or, or uh, situation connections. So simply adding feed forward connections like a sensory input, like uh, eyes to the brain or feedback connections or uh, uh, feed forward motor outputs uh, such as um, uh, going from the brain to the motor output is um, not going to contribute to increase of the uh, integrated information. So the next question is, how can we test this kind of idea? Um, so IAT explains and predicts that uh, conscious state should be associated with a high level of integrated information, as I said. And uh, how the next question would be, how can we estimate that the integrated information in the real brain? In the real brain, it's very difficult to compute exactly integrated information. And that's the uh, ongoing topic of the research right now. But uh, if we can stimulate the brain and measure the complexity of the response patterns, then we can estimate the uh, integrated information of the real brain. That's the sort of idea. And that's uh, the way we do it is going to be explained. Uh, I'm going to explain it in the next video.